Hello, dear friends, my lovely audiences. Welcome to the East West Show. Jack Chow, your host on the East West, which is、uh, exclusively sponsored by Wolfers, the Belgium royal family, designated brand of jewelry with 400 years of glorious history and hand forged by 10 generations of number one craftsmen on the global earth. The name of Wolfers stands for a testimony to the spectacular and the share. Of the royal glory. Thank you for sponsoring、uh, to the show、uh, today. With me is my dear friend, my dear brother,、uh, Lloyd Johnson, Mayor of West Covina. Welcome to the show. Well, thank you, sir. It's an honor. I re- respect him a lot. I <laughs> respect him not only because he is the mayor of West Covina, because of his service with the city, but. He served the country in his own way during the Vietnam War, the bloody war that the whole nation denied. He went and came home with lots of,、uh, lots of uh, obstacles, lots of difficulties. However, he stood himself, stood high,、uh, and he started the service、uh, right away in other ways. And now he, his service is never <coughs> stopped. Till today, so thank you for serving the country, and thank, thank you. you for serving the committee. Thank you for the non-stop service. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. Very、right, good. So today I have Mayor Johnson here to do the city update, West Covina update. And by the way, we care for every city. To West Covina, we do with a special care, because it's our home. West Co- West Covina is our headquarters. Is our location for our headquarters.、Mm-hmm. So, recently,、uh, how the city is doing? Well, you know, we still have a financial problem, Jack,、mm-hmm. but we have our police and fire. They were successful enough doing a tax initiative for the city of West Covina. Maybe、mm-hmm. a sales tax. That means everybody comes in the city of West Covina, whatever they purchase, the sales tax will stay in West Covina. Uh-huh. The way it is right now, West Covina has never passed a sales tax. Never had one. The sales tax you pay in West Covina right now goes to the state or the county.、Uh-huh. We get nothing of it. We maybe one one percent is、mm-hmm. all we get of the sales、mm-hmm. tax. Now we have a sales tax on there that's very important. It needs to pass. That's three quarters of a cent.、Uh-huh. That it will all stay in West Covina. Three quarters or percent. Three, three quarter percent of it, which we could raise anywhere from. Six million to thirteen million dollars a year,、mm-hmm. which will stay in the city of West. All right,、Carolina, that's quite a substantial. Which will help our police and our fire,、uh-huh. because our public safety is way down. We only have at this time, we're lo- we our highest I've ever seen in living in West Covina for over fifty years.、Mm-hmm. We had like up to one hundred and twenty-eight officers at one time. We're down to. We only have seventy-eight officers on the street. Oh, I on see. On the street. Oh, I see. And we have nine. We have more than that. We have like 99. Some of them off, with injured, and with, and with our mid, uh, mid, uh, 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 like the lieutenants and captains, mid management. But the officers that are on the street patrolling 24/7, seven days a week,、mm. we only have 78 to do the 17 square miles. I see. Which isn't enough. We need、mm. a lot more. So if we can pass, if this、uh, sales tax passes, which I really hope it does, we'll be able to hire more police. And get them on the street.、Uh-huh. How do you see the response from the、uh, citizens of well, West Covina? The ones I've talked to, they don't have a problem with the sales tax. They have a problem with the language of it, the way it was put on there. But you know what? The city council can take care of the language. You know, but the main thing is, is that we get it to pass, because our city's in dire need of financial. Before, they would tell you that we had a spending problem. And not a revenue problem.、Mm-hmm. I'm here to tell you, Jack. We have a revenue problem. We don't have、All、the、right. revenue. So unless we get more revenue, the city's doomed. We don't have enough. Ah ha 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 ha. So I'm hoping that the residents. It was the time that we people talk about the transparency of your budget,、yes. right? 
And the later the budget became very, very, very uh, transparent. Yes, it is. Right? And now through the transparency, we see that we have either, I mean, more a revenue problem rather than spending. Yes. Because you guys tightened, tightened your spending. Yes, we did. And uh, successfully, I believe. Yes, right? you know, like we tightened our spending like the council, mm. like our, our stipend that we usually get, we cut it in half. We cut out our travel. We don't get, we don't get that. Uh -huh. we, there's a lot of things that, that were perks that the council was getting, the past council was getting. I see. This council eliminated all of it. Ah. You know, so we've cut, we've cut our budget. I mean, we've cut our I revenue see. down. I so see. To show the residents that we all have to tighten up, we need this, and mm. that we don't have these perks that the past councils in the, in the past have. Mm. Our council doesn't take them. In other words, this, uh, this council is so, success, uh, so successful that uh, you cut down the, uh, the, the, the uh, expenditure yes, expand. by quite a bit, yeah. and effectively it helps with the revenue. It, it, every little bit helps. Every, it, you have to understand, not one thing will cure it. A little bit here and a little bit there and a little bit there, it all adds up. Of course. And if, of course. The, res if the council can show the re residents, no, we're not getting the perks that the councils in the past had. Mm -hmm. We want to be more uh, responsible on it, on the financials, mm -hmm. that they understand that, yes, we need this tax to pass. I see, I see. You just now mentioned about uh, the fact that uh, the, uh, uh, the citizens might support, might be supportive, yes. but due to the language barriers. Well, the language in it, because we have some, I think most of the residents won't pay it. No, I'm saying don't pay attention. They'll read it. Uh -huh. And I hope they ask questions. Uh -huh. It's those that are against the tax in the first place with the, the argument. Because remember, when something goes on a ballot, you have those mm -hmm. in favor and you have those against. It only depends what the argument they put against it. I see. And if the residents understand that the council has control of the tax money, mm -hmm. the council writes what happens to the tax money, mm -hmm. not the special interests. Mm -hmm. So I think everything will be fine if, the, if that's what they understand. Do the majority of the citizens care about what's going on in the city? I think they, they do. Uh, they do. Nine, if Jack and I said this many times. You can go through the city of West Covina, ask 99% of them if they know who your council is, who your mayor is, who your city manager, and most of them will say no. Mm -hmm. they, don't, they don't pay attention to city government. Uh, what they care about is that they have safe neighborhoods. Uh -huh. mm. There's no crime, graffiti, and I gangs see, I see. in their neighborhood. That's what they care about. Does the city have a program to televise its activities? Well, we're not, we're not really, but you know, we have. Our, we do our council meetings. They're on TV. Uh -huh. We do our planning commission meetings. They're televised. Mm -hmm. The residents can see what's going on. You know, what we do in our council, the issues that are brought up, and how the, the residents that bring them up. And the, issue, and the way the mm. council reacts to them and what the council does. I see, I see. Do you have a newsletter system or yeah, well, we, we have a, pamphlets uh, or flyer systems? We, we do have one thing. We have a pamphlet that goes out to every resident mm. three times a year. And right. we have to every resident. We have a, what's going on in the city, what's happening in the city, what we're looking forward to, what, what we expect to go, what's going on, and the crime, all of that's in it. I remember from last time that you have uh, a little over 100,000 population, right? 115,000, between 115 and 120,000 now. Oh, 15 already? What you know, we look at the old signs that are on the city. 115 already? Yeah, we look at the old signs on the city, which are way too old. As it said back then, 105,000. But that's over 10, 12 years ago. Mm. We have a, we have anywhere from 115 to 120,000. Oh, I see. So now it's no longer a little over 100,000. Oh, no, it's it's a, quite a bit over. Yeah, 115, 120,000 people in the city of West Virginia. Like, 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 like what? Like 15,000. Yeah, well, we, we've over. gone over since the last time they did it, almost anywhere between 10 and 15,000 more than what the sign. If you walk drive mm. through West Covina, uh -huh. that's say a population of 105. But that's outdated. That's years ago. We're way past that now. Without the mm. houses being built, more apartments being built, I and mean, things going on, we're way past that now. And also, another look at the city, though, is a very residential city. Yes. Not too much noises. You know, West Covina is a built-out, you know, uh, city. Uh, 
more homes and you know like that residential than anything else. Uh, but yet we still have our retail, we have our autos, we have our malls and stuff mm -hmm. like that to, to help out with the revenue. I see, I see. All right, all right. Okay, my dear friend, my lovely audience, today with me is my dear friend, my dear brother. I joke around, say brother by the same mother, yeah. <laughs> Lloyd Johnson, only he's a little taller than me. <laughs> about, an inch, about a foot and a half. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, we're doing the city update, West Covina update. Uh, like I said, he is the mayor. I, I, uh, I give most of my respect, not only for his mayorship, but also for the fact that he served the country in the hardest way he could. Uh, Vietnam veteran, and he still he came home wounded with his Purple Heart. Uh, well, it needs to be recognized and needs to be uh, respected, right? Thanks. So let's take a short moment out. Okay. Uh, you mentioned about the police department. Yes. You have a short uh, shortage yes. problem. Yes, do. And uh, when we come back, let's talk about a fire. Please. Sure, All let's right. do that. So stay with us. Hello, dear friends, my lovely audience, and welcome back to the East West Show that mm -hmm. is exclusively sponsored by Wolfers, the Belgium royal family designated <laughs> brand of jewelry with 400 years of glorious history and hand forged by 10 generations of the number one craftsman on the global earth. The name of Wolfers stands for a testimony to the spectacular and the share of the royal glory. Thank you for sponsoring. Back to the show. With me today is my dear friend, my lovely brother, uh, Lloyd Johnson, mayor of West Comina, lovely city where we locate, we are situate, we situate our headquarters in. Yes. Uh, talking about the city update <coughs> though, people first, well, look at his, uh, his money, mm. his budget. And on the budget sheet, you see the revenue, you see the expenditures, you see the balance or not balance. Anyway, right? Yes. Okay. Talking about the fact, the mayor says that uh, the city needs quite some work, some patchwork with these police department, right? Yeah. So you were saying on the streets, the active patrol were 70 something versus the fact that they need 120 something? Yeah, yeah. You know, we have, like I say, we have 78 officers that are patrol officers. 78, now, remember, to be precise. Remember, and they have different shifts. And, you know, it's not all 78. We don't have 78, oh, I see. I see. We don't I have see. 78 on the street at one time. Uh -huh. That's the problem. We only have a few on the street at a time. And maybe three, six, nine, maybe 12 officers or 14 officers on the street at one time. I see. Because they split them up into shifts. Mm. You know, one works 12, you know, so, it's, uh, you know, so the different shifts they work. With the largest city, how many miles, square Se miles? 17 square miles. 17 square miles, yeah. right, so I see. So that's really not, you know, you need, mm. you need, at one time, we should have at least 85 to 90 police officers on the street at, all, right. all, all together, mm. through, it says 78, or, you know, so it's. 17 by the metro standard. We uh, should have one officer for every thousand people. Yeah. I was exactly to checking with so that. So we should have a minimum of 115, it's 115 a officers. Modern me metropolitan uh, yeah. standard. Yeah, it's one for every thousand. One per thousand, right? So we should have a minimum of 115 officers. No, you should have 170. Well, you know, if, if we have 115,000 residents, we should have a minimum oh, yeah. of 115 oh, yeah. officers. To square mile mileage, right, there's yeah, one yeah. thing, but to population, for population for you population. deserve 115 to 120. Oh, yeah. But if, so the minimum we should have uh, is one officer for every thousand right. residents. So when you say the, the number of officers, you're yeah. talking about the office work officers? No, I'm talking about, I'm talking about, forget about the office workers, because a lot of those are non commit you know, a lot of those. But I'm talking about sworn officers. They can go out on the street and do the job of 
a police officer. That comes from the uh, from the of one thousand. We're, we're talking about thousand. our police chief, our, our captain, lieutenants, mm -hmm. all of them. Mm -hmm. We should have a minimum of one hundred and fifteen officers. I see. Mm -hmm. Out of one hundred fifteen thousand. Does that mean you have a shortage of almost the fifty? Well, you got you got. We're a lot right now. We're budgeted for ninety nine, but you take we got eight of those off on injury, so that goes down to ninety one. Ah. But then you got your lieutenants and your, your administrative officers, your lieutenants and your captains and your chiefs. Yeah, yeah. And then you have your uh, dispatchers and you have those. Okay, so I'm, what I'm just saying in your, so but what I'm saying, we only have 78 yeah, that yeah, can yeah, actually yeah. go out and uh -huh, do patrol. Uh -huh. You know, one time we used to have 10 motorcycle police officers. We're down to three. Wow, that's quite substantial. And then then uh, let me, if, if I may, take a look. I mean, that's our police department. Now you go to our fire department. We haven't talked about them. Yeah. Let's talk about them. But thank you very much for the hard work, though. Yeah, you yeah. maintain the city is still safe. We're still safe, you know, <laughs> because <laughs> we with have that little number with such a big shortage that you still maintain the city is safe. Yes, we do. Our police officers have priorities. Mm. If they're going to, want, if someone makes a call for. Uh, Let's say they have a loud noise or what, they have a residential problem. It's not a, uh, and the police officer's on their way to go take care of that, and they get another call that's a more priority call, uh -huh. like a break-in or something that, they will redirect themselves. They won't go to this one. They'll go take care of the one that's an emergency uh, first, and then they'll come back and get see, this one later. See, but if we had enough officers, mm. they could go ahead and take care of this and then have officers to respond to uh, see, well, We can't I do see. that right now because uh, we don't have the officers see, no. do it. And how's the fire department looking? Well, our fire department, we're down to 66, which is way below. We need, we, we, have, we, we need at least, probably about at least another dozen fire department. Mm. You know? But what happened with our budgets on it? We What's the standard? You, you check, you, you, you count by engines okay. or you count no, by no, no, no. We team still, members? No, we still have the amount of fire engines that we have, the fire trucks. We still have five stations, but we don't have enough firefighters. And that's what we have firefighter paramedic, excuse me, firefighter paramedics, and we have, but we don't have enough firefighters. I see. And we're short handed. I see. I see. Some of our trucks should have four, mm -hmm. four people on it. We only have three. You know, so we just don't have enough. So, to find it mathematically, how big is the shortage by numbers? I would say from the firefighters, about 15. 15? Yeah. All right, more five right. So, but that's where our budgets get way out of whack because mm -hmm. if we don't have the people that we have, all of our other firefighters and our police, they have to work all this overtime. All right, okay. And that runs the budget up. Overtime is really, it's really, that costs us more than anything. You that. know, you know, uh, it is uh, rather different from the fact that the city needs money if they want to put up a building. Yeah. But you were talking about the city safety. Yeah, public safety. Public safety. Mm -hmm. Right, security, yes. and you're talking about a fire yeah. protection yes. and a fire fighting. Yeah. Right? They do a fabulous job. Those are job, hard Jack. stuff, hard, hardcore stuff. Yes, they are. I mean, they do a fabulous job with the, with mm -hmm. the amount of uh, people they have. Oh, uh, you see. I, I hand it to them, I commend them for the jobs that they do. Mm -hmm. uh, the response time is where it's supposed to be, but it's difficult on them when they have to work 12, 14, 16, 18 hours because they don't have anybody to fill the job to come see, in. So our firefighters are working a lot of overtime. Our police officers work a lot of overtime because right. we don't have the men to fill the jobs. So wouldn't the overtime. sales tax increase of uh, three quarters of a per percent, yeah. uh, do you think altogether three to five million dollars? No, no. It could start out maybe the first year, three, four million dollars. After a year or two, it could go up to thirteen million dollars. Ah, I see. Because I you see. know we have a big city, we have the malls, we have the you know we have all the other, but the more the sales tax mm. stays here now, mm. on it, the more it gets to go into it. All right. Suppose if the city, uh, if the citizens, the voters decided to do it, yes. to go your way, to the city council way, uh, mm. uh, the police officers. And the firefighters will be made up, made up right away. It will take just a little while because you always remember the sale tax. That money isn't going to drop right into our pocket. It's going to take a little while for it to get there. You know, it's just it's if we start uh -huh. the sales tax today, uh -huh. maybe six months down the road we'll have the money. Yeah, of course, of course, you're of course. Saying, But it will be. Mm. Or it will be right away. Be like you're you're talking years. about the operation. Yes, the processing the time. The process, right? the money coming into us. Right, but by theory. 
you had the money, had you had the money, we can three, budget. five millions, yeah. you will stop the problem right now. Yeah, we can start budgeting for it. Mm. Yeah, we can budget for it. We can say, I we see. got this money, can, we can estimate how much money is going to come All in. Right. And we can set a budget for that. Mm -hmm. And then we can go from there. We can move. The city, if it passes, the city's going to be a lot better financial problem than we are now. Uh -huh. a you situation. mentioned in the very beginning that you were starting a signature campaign? I'm sorry? Or petition campaign. Well, no, they already did it. The police, the police and the fire. They, what happened? The council did not want to put a sales tax on. Uh, I could not. I tried, Jack. Uh, I was the only one that, that was supporting the sales tax because I knew we needed it. The other four councilmen said no. Mm -hmm. They did not. They did not want the council to put it on. They backed away from. It. I couldn't even get support on it. Mm -hmm. So the police started it. They got a petition going around getting signatures. I see. See what happens? You can go around the city council, with your own petition initiative. So they went out and then the fire department got in with them and they needed like 5,500 signatures, to verify signatures to put it on the ballot. Mm. Where they got over 8,000 signatures in West Covina. 6,500? 5,500. 5,500? And they got over 8,000. Now what happened, those signatures have to go to the county recorder's oh. office and they have to verify the signatures. That means you did have the grassroots support. Yes. Oh, the police, yeah, the police and fire did a great job. They did. Mm -hmm. And I, I believe that if they got 55 good signatures for, the, for it to go on the ballot, it should pass. So the reason why they go with eight, over 55, you need 55, you want to go a minimum of 7,000. Uh -huh. Because you have a lot of those singers that aren't any good. You yeah, have a lot yeah. of those singers that the county recorders aren't going to be able to read. And mm -hmm. if they can't read the signatures, they throw them out. So that's why you go a lot more. Because if you need 55, you go 8,000. Now you have something like, what, 2,300 more above mm. what you needed. So this whole thing looks very promising. I think it does. I think it looks real good. Well, very good. OK, my dear friend, today with me is my dear friend, Mayor of West Covina, Mr. Lloyd Johnson. And uh, we are checking with the city's update, uh, talking about the city campaign of uh, trying to help with the police department and the fire department to help the public safety and security at the firefighting, so which is very logic, very legit. Uh, let's take a moment out. We will come back to continue from right there, please. Hello, dear friends, lovely audiences. Welcome back to the East West Show that is exclusively sponsored by Wolfers. Uh, the Belgium royal family designated a brand of jewelry with 400 years of glorious history and hand forged by 10 generations of uh, number one craftsmen on the global earth. Uh, the name Walfer stands for a spectacular, I mean the testimony to the spectacular and a share of the royal glory. Thank you for sponsoring. Back to the show, to the discussion about update of West Covina, talking about the city uh, budget, overlooking at the, I mean, by looking at the budget, we see the expenditure has been tightened up to certain extent, I would say extremely tight. And then you look at the budget though, you still see a uh, shortage. The shortage is uh, uh, obviously seen by the lack of uh, police officers on the street, patrol mm -hmm. officers to travel around the patrol on an area of 17 square miles with a population of almost 115,000 uh, people. Well, you know, day and night basis by running three shifts, 78 is really a scary number. Yes, it is very right. scary. And thank God these guys, the city council, they did a good job. And the officers, they did a good job still maintain the city so far safe. Yes. Right. Definitely. And so far, lucky, no fire broke up. <laughs> so yeah. with uh, even less firefighters, and um, the job is done, the work is so far so good. However, 
You know, you never know Mother Nature, never right? Know. When something happens, well, you know, uh, something devastating happens. Yes. Got, uh, got to be serious about it. So the city has the support. I mean, the citizens supporting themselves by running a uh, uh, campaign of uh, bringing sales tax up a little bit by three quarter percent. Uh, that's less than a penny. Yes, it is. That's less than a penny. Well, I know I can't afford that. <laughs> I think we, we all need to, what happens, Jack, like I said, when you have a sales tax, anybody that does business in the city of West Covina mm. helps. It's not just on the residents. Exactly, West exactly. I was just about to ask you, in addition to to bring up the sales tax at the, yeah. uh, the present time, though, uh, last time you and Tony Wu, uh, both talking about uh, uh, bringing more business to West yes, Covina. Yes, we are. We're, we're, right? very, we're very uh, happy that we opened Sprouts. Yeah, yeah. Sprouts Since the last time we met on the show, though, yeah. any progress? Well, like I said, you know, we're, since the last time I was here, Sprouts Market opened up in the Eastern Center. Oh. And every, a resident's been asking for a long time that if we could get a Sprouts back in West Covina, mm -hmm. and we did. Mm -hmm. And that's a big supermarket. That's going to be a good sales tax for us over mm -hmm. there. You know, we've had those. I think I think we had already opened a portals last time I was on before that. That's that's a, doing fantastic. You know, so we have these here st stores that are really popular. That are you know, portals we should be generate between fifty and sixty thousand a year. Uh -huh. Sprouts would be probably about close to the same thing a year for us. The last time it was mentioned by both you and Tony Wu that you guys have a pretty big potential of some uh, big investors coming into West Covina. Has anything happened so far in that no, way? No, that's, you know, uh, the one Tony was talking about, he's talking about Simpoli, maybe up at the BKK. I'm here to tell you, Jack, that's not gonna happen for a long time. It, uh, it's wishful thinking I that see. it can happen overnight. But remember, if you put something on a BKK, you have eight regulatory systems that has to fly yeah, off on right, it. Right. So we're you. talking about years down the road. It, but if it's gonna happen, it'll happen. Mm -hmm. If not, you know, but we have to look other ways. That's why we can't depend on it. If it happens, it'll be, it'll be good, good for us. Uh -huh. Last time, uh, you guys also mentioned about uh, big hotel possibilities. You know, I, I Is know. there anything coming? Well, like I said, we're hoping, like I said, the one that, like I said, BKK, I, I know Tony wants to put a big hotel up there, but like I said, that's down the road. Now, we also have a, the other one that are the mall in West Covina. They plan on redoing the mall, which they need to do because, you know, brick and mortar stores are kind of falling out. More people shopping online with Amazon and all that. So the, your big malls have to revamp themselves. So we know that Kmart and Sears are going out of business. You know, that's all over the place. I know the Kmart that we have now is closing. So we don't know, we heard there might be a big store coming in that we don't, they haven't given us a brand name yet because they don't want to, mm. until they sign the dotted line, they don't want to get out. And now I know that if Sears closes at the uh, Plaza of West Covina, that Sears closes, Sears owns their own building and they own the parking lot right there, but they, the, ma the mall will take mm -hmm. it over. We're hoping mm -hmm. that the mall will consider putting a hotel there where Sears is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Which, which right off the freeway, it's the bed tax off of that would be a windfall for us on it. And, you know, I think it'd be a win-win situation. Looking on the freeway, though, the yeah. side of the freeway, there is, that is the beautiful location for some hotels. Yeah. We, Look at San Gabriel, right? Yeah. They had the Hilton yeah. and they had Sheraton now. Yeah. So who, I mean, people never thought possible for that area to have Hilton as well as, as Sheraton, Sheraton. Yeah, yeah. but they did. And they work, it works. And they work, yeah. and they started bringing money in. You know, we have the little the little hotels that really aren't like a mm -hmm. four or five star mm -hmm. hotel. It's only like two or three ho stars, you know, like the, like the Holiday Inn and stuff like that. We have those, mm -hmm. but that's like a three star hotel. They do yeah, good, yeah, 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 yeah. but we need to do a high end hotel. Four, a, a minimum of a four star. At least a, at least a four star. At minimum. And I think that's what we'll get there right by the freeway. Mm -hmm. And because they plan on putting a big uh, mm -hmm. conference room at the bottom that can hold something like a couple thousand people. 
yeah, and, yeah, in yeah, a big right, conference. Right. And, you yeah. know, so that will be a big windfall. With the location taken into consideration, with the convenience of transportation taken into consideration, uh, consideration, especially when Ontario Airport start, yes. started operating, right? Yes. So you're talking about you're almost next door to the airport. Yes, we are. So I think that would be a windfall. 15, 15 minutes drive. 15, 20 minutes, a top yeah. 20 minutes. Yeah, sure, sure. And then with all these taken into, into consideration, if you had a hotel, like Four Star mm -hmm. Hotel, like say it's Hilton, yeah. for, for example, and uh, lots of conventions will happen here. Yes. Will happen here, right? You know, we might even get, you know, if we can do something like that, we could probably even get EDI to do something there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we, we can move in. We can move in. We can, we can move in. have you guys do something there. Uh -huh. We need the place for we it. We can move in. Yes, we, yes, you know, yes. we need the place for it. But mm -hmm. I'm just saying that uh, that would be a windfall. That would be great because, you know what, that would put West Covina more on the map itself. A big hotel, uh, like a Hilton or something like that, mm -hmm. right by the freeway. You can get off the freeway. You can go to it and get right back yeah. on the freeway. This is this is lots of lots of convenience convenience you, for transportation. You don't have to go through town. Yeah. You know, like when you, when you go to, like in, in mm -hmm. San Gabriel when you go yeah. there, you have to go through the town. You have to uh, J C Penney, Macy. You have yeah. Twenty One uh, yeah. Century. Yeah. You no, have, we, we uh, have a lot of them. We have, whatsoever, yeah. Forever Twenty One. Forever Twenty One. You have a Crazy Horse whatsoever. On well, on on. We don't on. have a Crazy Horse anymore. That's what yeah. the, that the Crazy Horse. That's what Portos is now. Ah, all right. Before, yeah. Anyway, anyway, it's a lot of convenience. Yeah, it's a lot lots of convenience, of convenience right? right? So, um, in addition to that, is there anything else that can bring money? Well, you know, like you say, West Covina is a built-out city. We have to be more uh, creative on uh, what we do. And all right. And, uh, so, like you say, when you don't have the space to build, you have to upgrade. That's what I think what the mall's doing. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't want... Let's talk about, you know, what was gave to the mall, the deal that they gave to the mall years mm -hmm. ago when the mall was built, that we don't get any sales tax from the mall right now. We won't get any sales tax until 2023. So all the sales uh, tax going to the mall, we don't get any of it. The I mall see. keeps whatever they, they can and whatever goes to the state, but they keep mm -hmm. it, they, we don't share it with the state. But once that's done in 2023, we're talking about another extra 2 to $3 million a year we'll be getting from them. All right, all right. So it that's another happen. hope. That's another hope yeah. down the road. That's mm -hmm. down the road. Mm -hmm. So we have we have all these potentials uh -huh. to make West Covina a more prosperous city. Mm -hmm. and so we just have to keep moving forward. We, as a matter of fact, love West Covina. And I believe that we do have a strong reason to love West Covina. Yes. Otherwise, we will have moved elsewhere, right? Well, I know. Yeah. We'll move elsewhere. That's why we bought this property here. We even get yes. rooted here, right? Yes. We like this city because uh, it's a flat. It has uh, uh, lots of uh, opportunities. It's safe. Though not lots of uh, land left, right? Open no, no, land. No, no, most of the land, we, we were basically landlocked. I mean, as far as uh, uh, we don't have basically industrial. The, uh, the only place we have is industrials in this area, you know, that we can build on. There's no other place else is already built out. So, you know, it's uh, kind of locked in to what we're doing. So the homes, more homes that are being built. And mm. so we just have to upgrade what we have. Okay. Speaking of homes, though, does the city of West Covina have the uh, homeless problem? city of West Covina has homeless problem like every city does. You know, yeah, it is now uh, a problem Gable, every city right? has, yeah. but... Uh, we How have, is we have uh, West Covina doing with that? Well, you know, we have almost, uh, last count around 300. Uh -huh. you know, a few years ago, we were less than 100. Uh -huh. You know, and it's, every, it's all over the city, but, you know, it's how you deal with it. We have to remember, homeless isn't a crime, but so all we can do is offer them the help, and we do. You know, but we, it's related to crime. It, you know, some of it is, Jack, and some of it isn't. You know, a, a criminal's a criminal, mm -hmm. no matter if they're homeless or not. A criminal's but, a criminal. But you have to deal with, We anyway. have to deal with. We have to deal with the homeless. We have to figure out. And with the laws that were passed, you know, they, they passed the laws that years ago, we had an ordinance, you couldn't sleep in the parks after 10 o'clock. Mm -hmm. The law says they can sleep there 24-7 if they want to now. We can't stop them. So it's the laws that have been put in place 
that are tied in the hands of our police officers. You know, mm. So we have to think of other ways. Is the CD capable of handling that? Well, we are. You are. You know, but uh, it takes a while. The homeless would seem that they want to set up in a certain area, and we have to make sure we get the police and the officers All in there right. to kind of clear the areas out. Along, like I say, sometimes mm. they'll, uh, they'll start camping out along the freeways. They start camping out behind stores and stuff, and we can clear them out mm. on it. No, but, but you want to treat them as human anyway. But, oh, yeah, but they're not They're human. They're oh, human yeah. beings. They are human beings. So a lot of them, you know, mm -hmm. you can, those that want help and those that want, don't want help. The ones that don't want help are usually your alcoholics, your drug addicts, and stuff like that. They don't want oh, help. Oh, they have to have a reason. They must have a reason. Yeah, and right. they don't want help. They must have a reason. The ones that are out there that All want right, help. All right, my dear friend, my lovely audience, as we uh, uh, take a break out, uh, we will be back right away. So stay with us. Peace. Hello, dear friends, lovely audiences, welcome back to the show. Jack Chow on the East West. This show is exclusively sponsored by Wolfers, the Belgium royal family designated brand of jewelry with 400 years of glorious history and hand forged by 10 generations of master craftsmen of the global earth. The name Wolfers stands for as a testimony to the spectacular and the share of the royal glory. Thank you for sponsoring. Uh, with me today is my good friend, Mr. Lloyd Johnson, Mayor of West Covina. Uh, we are doing the West Covina update. Uh, for a city update, though, we first touch his money. And with his money, we talk about why they needed that money. We started to see the really, really, really need of the officers, well, by which there are a shortage of uh, 30, 40 officers. Yeah. And the fire department, well, they need more firefighters. Luckily, so far, there's no fire that broke. Uh, we've had a few fires, but nothing major. Uh, uh, not major. Sitting, yeah, we've had a few uh, fires. Not on the cross, on the hand, we'll on the hand line. Right? No, they, no, they can handle <laughs> Not the on the hand line. Not the All right, and the um, uh, public safety-wise, there's nothing that broke up, so too serious, right? But we, well, they are lucky, right? So we have to be prepared for the worst. Yes, okay? we do. So that's why a sales tax campaign is going on that has gone uh, very wild, very viral, and with lots of support, right? Yes. And we check about other possibilities of uh, uh, bringing business into the city, which they are working on. Yes. Uh, 24 7. And also, there is the third one of uh, bringing money to the city, though, uh, of the uh, uh, marijuana law. Yes. Right? So, and what is going on now? Well, right now, it's still in the planning process where they have to set the regulations, what we want on it, the, the parameters mm -hmm. of it. You know, since uh, it's been passed, it's, it's legal. Mm. You know, marijuana basically it was legal. It was put on the same way. To me, I look at marijuana the same thing as drinking, and like you're drinking a beer or something like that. It's the same thing. You're not allowed to drink in public, so you're not allowed to smoke marijuana in public. You're allowed to smoke it in your house now. As a matter of fact, you're allowed to grow your own private of six plants in your own house. Mm. But if there's a, some cities, I mean, it's a big revenue. For a lot of cities. Yes, yes. Uh, so, mm -hmm. uh, West Covina is, but the only place it can be grown that we've said if they're going to do it is in industrial manufacturing. And the side mm -hmm. of the town that we're in now is the only area. In a sealed area, right? Yes, it That's has to how be you inside. guys plan to do it. has to be inside, not outside. Oh, uh, so I see. Grow any I see, I see. Even yeah. it, at home, it has to be indoors. It can't be outside. People worry about uh, the distance between that location. Uh, to their 
to schools sure. or to their homes. There has to be a minimum, I think, of 500 feet uh, mm. between a business and a school, a business uh, and a church, and a business. I but think. given the fact it's a sealed operation, though, it doesn't influence the uh, schools or homes too much. No, does it? they figure some people are thinking that you have more crime around that. But you know what? The way that we would set the regulations on it, that any place that does it, they have to have their own security. 24-7. They have to have security that's 24-7. Of course, that's by it. then you will have more police officers on the street yeah. anyway. And, and plus, there's only a few places in the city of West Covina that would be allowed to do it. And that's uh -huh. in our manufacturing. I see, I see. You know, in the area that we're in right, right now that you're doing your television from, is the only manufacturing area that we have this whole part of the city. So this is part of the city, our place that can be grown. Do the people see how much of revenue it will bring to the city? Well, I think if we get it moving forward, then we get those that really want to get into it, that really mm. would like to do the manufacturing of it in the city of West Covina, they will come up with the numbers for us. And they will, the residents will find out it's a high number. I mean, you can make a few a million dollars a year mm. off of it. So, because the city of West Covina, the way I would want to put it in, I wouldn't want to put on their sales. I would want to tax them on the square footage. That's yeah, the yeah, the square footage of uh, I don't care of how much, plantation. I don't right? care how much they sell, how much they grow. Uh, I just it, it said But that, can't you do both? No, you don't want to do that. You really don't want to do. Mm. Where you make your money off of it, Jack, is that okay. you do it on square footage. So if if the sales go up or the sales go down, mm. it shouldn't affect how much money we're getting. So it's, it's say that one business is giving us a, uh, let's say, 25, I'm just going to throw a small number out there. Let's say they're going to give us $25,000 a month. That means if they have 25,000 square feet, uh, we're getting that much. If they have a 100,000 square feet mm -hmm, building, mm -hmm. we get $100,000 a month. It's more secure <laughs> because people can, cannot lie. No. Because you just measure the land yeah. by square footage. On the inside of the building, if you have a hundred... And there comes a number. If you have a hundred thousand square feet inside that building that you want to grow marijuana in, mm. that's how much you're going to be paying us a month. All right, okay, okay, good. Okay. And that's big money. That's big money. That's big money, right? A hundred thousand dollars a month times 12, you figure that's over a million dollars a year. Yeah, that's, a, that's another few million dollars yeah. a year, right? Okay. Right. All right, my dear friends, it looks that we, uh, we see that. I'm uh, not saying I'm supporting or not supporting. Mm -hmm. I'm just seeing that with a seal, sealed operation, things can be done. Yeah. Things can be done. Yeah. And you voted for the, for the yes or the no? I voted yes. I think I was the only council member right uh, now. I was on the last council. I see. I see. Uh, this council that's on there right now. You're one of the three. Yeah, well, well what happened? No, the, the three of the ones that are on there right now, they, they weren't on there last time. The two that were on there was Tony and me. I was for it, Tony was against it. Mm. So I don't know where the other three council members are because we haven't discussed it. It hasn't brought up for discussing yet. Uh. We sent it back to the planning commission mm. to set the parameters, to set the, you know, how it has to be done. And it hasn't came back to us yet. Uh -huh. So we'll see when it comes back to us. All right, very good. It. Anyway, uh, once that uh, becomes into law and uh, it is only a matter of time, matter of time. Uh, in practicality, all right? Because it is the money that the city wanted from it, and it is the benefit people wanted from it yes. anyway, all right? Uh, that concludes today's interview. Uh, we thank you for watching, and to my dear friend, the Mayor Lloyd Johnson, thank you very much very welcome, for sir. sharing. You're very thank welcome. you very much You're for very bringing welcome. the city update. Thank, thank you, Jack. Uh,